Welcome to Electric Dreams, the podcast of the Yorkshire EV Club. Today we've got a bumper episode for you. We are interviewing YouTuber Kevin Chan, who will be talking about his MG ZS EV. We'll be talking about the Mini Electric and the Ford Marquee. So stay tuned for that. In this episode then, we're going to start off talking to YouTuber, uh, our guest YouTuber, Kevin Chan from the channel KC Talks EV. Hello, Kevin. Thanks for joining us. No problem. Uh, pleasure being here. Nice to have you here. Nice to have you here. It's, yeah. it's, I think you're, you're our first guest. You're our first official guest on the, uh, the Yorkshire EV Club Electric Dreams podcast. Uh, you, are, you are privileged. And we met, <laughs> we met Kevin at uh, Meadow Hall. And uh, our Meadow Hall meet, the club's Meadow Hall meet, it was probably our, our biggest meet ever. And... Uh, um, we, we were all wondering, the MG ZS EV's been out for a while now, and um, we thought, oh, well, we hope we get some here, and lucky for us, Kevin turned up, not only a, an MG ZS EV driver, but someone who does YouTube channels, on, you couldn't ask for more of an expert, so <laughs> tell us what you do in a channel, Kev. Well, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't call myself an expert just yet, uh, <laughs> I've still got a good couple months, uh, easily a couple more years, probably, of knowledge that I need to sort of learn about. But certainly, um, when I, I mean, originally, I've always wanted to start a sort of YouTube channel. The main reason why was I remember sort of a few years ago watching YouTubers like Bjorn Nealand, uh, other people such as um, talking about the Ionic, for example. And I always wanted to do that sort of thing. Unfortunately, I never really had a topic to actually um, <laughs> talk, discuss it at any length or, you know. And when I first got the vehicle, I just thought, Now's the time to start speaking about it, um, do a bit of vlogging of my journeys, and just general sort of knowledge. So how long have you had the, the car then, Kev? So I've had the car now f- um, since, oh, it's like a birthday, remembering it. Um, it's like, uh, <laughs> I think it was 9th of December, so it's now been a good sort of few months as a recording. Okay, and just, just for the, the people, people listening, actually, um, we actually came in on a mini road trip. Kev picked us up. Uh, we got yes. chauffeur driven. Didn't we didn't we, we did. Uh, it, it's lovely. I, I've I've seen the outside of the MG ZS obviously a few times, and and yourself when I saw you at the uh, the Meadow Hall meet. Um, yeah, but to get inside the car while it's moving and actually appreciate being a passenger in a car, it, it's massively different. There's, you you can see all the cars as they are when you're at um, either a show or or a meet up. But when you're in the car and it's moving, it's completely different to me. I mean, I'm as people know who listen to this podcast, I don't drive an electric car yet, so it's it's. It's still quite a difference to me when I get in Darren's car or your car today, for example, the electric car, and I'm thinking, I've, I've sat in this car before. But because I've just come out of a petrol car on my journey home from work today, it's, it's, it's a massive difference again, all, all, all over again. But it's, it's amazing how much difference it makes, not only to the noise, but because it's quieter, without realising it, you're a lot more comfortable. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I've, I mean, bear in mind the ZS EV was actually my, um, it's actually my second, well, my second car. My first car was a um, Hyundai i20, so it was a bit of a small super mini. Mm. And I remember sort of, um, I remember, you know, stepping in it for the first time. My first journey was straight to York and actually back down to Sheffield. Um, I'm from Hull originally, but basically I sort of went on a mini road trip the first sort of night I had the car. As you would. Yeah. (laughs) And the the most interesting thing was by far was just the lack of wind noise. You know, um, my previous Hyundai was completely awful on the motorway. And bear in mind, um, as you can hear from my accent, I'm not from I'm not any from anywhere near Yorkshire. Um, I'm originally from (laughs) Somerset. So for me, it was always a two or three times a year I used to go to Yeovil. And going from that and now going into my MG, I'm not, you know, completely knackered or tired by the time I get, you know, back down south. And I could almost just keep driving, permitting the range, obviously. Mm. So well, We both commented on it on the way on coming, really. It's quite a windy, horrible night. It's not the best of evenings. It's raining. Um, and quite frankly, <laughs> I, I, you know, I've driven a few EVs. I'm, I'm, I'm a fourth EV now, but... Um, it's really quiet, really well insulated. I was re- and I was sat in the back for much of the journey, and quite frankly, so much room. It's such an effortlessly large car. Brilliant. Oh yeah. I mean, as I as I was telling um, Darren, Darren and John before I um, while we were driving, I was basically explaining to them. Frankly, it is a Chinese car, 
and the Chinese market, the first thing on the list is rear legroom. So, <laughs> yeah, um, which is re- it's really rare in a European car. Yeah, I, I mean the, the nearest I can think of is the the Skoda Superb, which is basically like a, a VW Passat but stretched. I mean, my dad back in the day used to own a Passat. And um, you know, I, I, I needed a car quick, and I ended up with a Skoda Superb, and it's, it looks familiar. But the back is just amazing. It's like being in a really nice, big, comfortable taxi, and having that in in, the, in a Chinese car, is, is, it makes you. Well, why don't the Europeans love this? Why is this such a rarity still in the in the British market? I mean, you mentioned the Skoda Superb. I mean, <laughs> you know, I remember those adverts where you know the kids in the back, and it's about the spaceship. You know, talking about, you know, going on the way to Mars, etc. Mm, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I'm not surprised. I mean, I've sat in the back of a superb, obviously, it's a taxi car, really. Yeah, it but, is. But, you know, it's spot on. You know, you could, I mean, when you look at all the car reviewers, they bring sort of fruit and vegetables to give you a sort of size comparison. <laughs> and when the guy comes out of a cucumber, you then suddenly realise, OK, that's really big. <laughs> Was he beyond with his banana boxes? Isn't oh, it? yes. Yeah. <laughs> the banana box <laughs> test. I haven't... The, Luckily, he, um, Bjorn actually managed to do that, so I don't have to go out, you know, to my local local Lidl and <laughs> steal all the boxes. But or maybe um, get, maybe go niche with it, you know, get some uh, I don't know, pine- the pineapple test. How many <laughs> pineapples you fit in the back? <laughs> or see how many bottles of wine you could fit in the back without them falling over or something. I oh, don't know. splash out! I, t- <laughs> I do that test in all my cars. <laughs> Always full of booze. Oh, don't worry about that. Um, come come the summer, my plan of action is to um, go, do. Do sort of the um, ask around and see who wants a bottle of wine. So when I go through the Calais hypermarkets, you know, <laughs> fill, the br- fill to the brim with my car. Really. So how did you find your... I noticed on your channel, I watched your most recent video, you had a bit of a mad dash to Heathrow. So how was a long, unplanned EV road trip for you? Well, um, yeah, I mean, to give a bit of backstory, which I probably didn't mention um, in the video, basically what happened was my friend contacted me sort of around 11 o'clock at night and I had to explain to them um, and they explained to me look we forgot one of our suitcases <laughs> you know and when you go on holiday that's oh. probably the <laughs> yeah it's the <laughs> it's the most odd thing to hear especially while driving but I really didn't have that much choice to go <laughs> to say oh no I really can't do that um, but in terms of the unplanned part um, it's it's not actually I mean I would say that let's say I had um, you know, a 24 kilowatt leaf five years ago when the infrastructure wasn't anywhere near the sort where it was now I think I would have possibly struggled quite significantly and don't get me wrong I did do a lot of stuff on that video for dramatic effect um, <laughs> but really um, I wouldn't consider it it's nowhere near as difficult as it was five years ago and even now with you know I wasn't let down um, in particular by any charges or, or the, any networks themselves. It was more the fact of the lack of planning. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. to an extent, to do a journey of 250-odd miles without doing any sort of planning whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. I, I, th- I, think, I think that goes with just organising a road trip in general, doesn't it, really? Exactly. If you're going to go a long distance. I mean, I mean even in, 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 my petrol, yeah, in my petrol car, rather, get me words out, I still need to look, you know, if I'm going all the way down to the south coast, that's a hell of a long way. You need to find out roughly where you're going to fill up. You can't really just wing it and see where you're going because if mm. you don't know the roads, you well, break down. Exactly the same principle. Isn't it gratifying, though, to know that you can do an unplanned trip? I mean, heaven forbid, we've moved, you know, people who've got relatives out of the area and all they've got is a 40 or 30 kilowatt EV and they need to dash down and see a relative who, who's fallen ill. Um, mm. Isn't it gratifying to know that it's possible to do a long unplanned trip? Oh, certainly. Um, by far, I mean, the thing is, when I was buying my electric ve- when I was buying the ZS EV in particular, I did ask questions about, you know, my, for example, my parents are still back down south in Somerset. So what if I need to go out and, you know, if there's an infam- medical emergency, you know, they get, to be honest with you, they're getting on a bit. And I need to, you know, if I need to be there in a few hours, like five, six hours. Yeah, you want to make sure you can. Exactly. And to be perfectly honest with you, you know, on a journey down to Yeovil, for example, um, I only now have to do two charging stops, and that's in winter. I would kind of expect that actually to go down to about one forty-minute stop. So actually, um, you know that that sort of um, argument against getting an electric vehicle definitely isn't there anymore. I think. Yeah. Well, well, that was going to be my, my question. When you went down to Heathrow, then how many times did you have to charge? 
Um, the thing is, um, obviously, accepting yeah. that you set off without your battery fully charged in the <laughs> yeah. first place. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. If you uh, would it be fair to say you had about half half, half a battery in the car, half a charge? Uh, I think I mentioned it was about forty percent. Um, unfortunately, with the ZS EV, it doesn't tell you a percentage. It gives you almost a complete. It's actually almost even worse compared to a petrol fuel gauge. Because <laughs> right. at least yeah. at that point, I've yeah. seen that. It does look like a fuel gauge, but. I don't think the increments are even, are they? No, they're not. <laughs> um, you know, some people on the um, ZS EV owners group have mentioned, you know, the first bar is from 100 to 91%. <laughs> and then <laughs> the last bar is 25%. So, oh, right, OK. Yeah. Uh, didn't someone say, or didn't I see on a video, that it starts whinging at you, the car? You know what they do when you get low. Mm. They love a good whinge, don't the electric cars? It's, you have about 30 miles left, and it's like starts really sort of saying, you've got to limit your power. Hang on, I can go, I can get 10 charges within 30 miles, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, with my car in particular, I've had the power limited at 25%, which is kind of almost concerning uh, more than anything. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, I set off with 40%. Um, I got to York, picked up the suitcase. Uh, that's when the unplanned, unplanned part really started to become apparent because I was looking at Zap Map. Yes, all of the parking rides do have polar charge points. Unfortunately, they're all closed after hours, and it was oh, about dear. one oh, in the morning. <laughs> so, um, luckily though, um, and we'll probably um, go on to it once we go on to um, sort of the general questions we're going to ask today. Yes. Yeah. But luckily, there are other sort of networks like Instafol where contactless card. Go on to it, no problem at all. Good charge rates. Brilliant. So after I was out of York, then I had to start battling the winds. <laughs> yeah, yes, of yes, course. So. It was very windy, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've Depending. not been short of wind. I mean, for a bit of context, for anyone who's listened to this sometime in the future, we've just had Storm Kiara, Storm Dennis, and God only knows what storm is George, next. George, I think, was the third uh, one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. George. But it's a very three odd weekends. spelling, George, and isn't it? <laughs> Keb, Keb was driving into all three of them. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I sympathise, because I was driving uh, the week, those weekends as well. I was driving down south, mm. conveniently, but the other side of the country, uh, to see my folks in Essex. And, um, yeah, the wind was absolutely ridiculous. So t- I, I, can, I can completely appreciate it was probably not going to be the best of journeys in any car. Oh, yeah. Left. I mean, the, the biggest problem is, um, you know, I mean, I had to sort of swallow my ego when I bought the ZS EV because it's an SUV. But unfortunately, <laughs> with the SUV part, it is the aerodynamics is about as good as a concave brick. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, during that journey on 100 percent, normally on the motorway, even on sort of winter, five degrees, that sort of area with no wind, I'd be expecting 135, 140 miles um, in reality with that sort of wind, 40 mile an hour headwinds, I was getting about 90, 95 miles. (laughs) Yeah. For all of the EV nerds like me out there, we all want to know what's your efficiency. And I'm I'm running in winter, my heater's on constantly. I'm running somewhere between uh, 3 and 3.5 in city driving. So what were you down to? (laughs) So um, my (laughs) first leg, I think I mentioned on the video, but I was approaching 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Um, and for any of you aficionados, that is <laughs> At this catastrophic. stage, all the EV listers are wincy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and bear in mind, even on a good day, I still only probably achieve 3 to 3.1. There are certainly some people on the forum which m- magically, I don't know whether they've been pushing their car at 70 miles an hour or something, but they've been achieving four and a half. You know, um, I think some people exaggerate. <laughs> <laughs> Driving just downhill. putting that out there. Yes. <laughs> So, yeah, um, apart from that, after that first charging stop, I met, you know, a really nice guy in a hotel. You know, he's absolutely spot on. Gave me some free coffee, which was lovely. Oh, nice. Um, But after that, everything started to die down. The winds died down. Temperature died down. And I was just able to get to my destination and get that suitcase there. Yeah. (laughs) Still, you know, I was... was, The most interesting thing was, was, and I think um, Darren will agree with me, with electric vehicles... Because you have to stop all the time, or stop every hour and a half, two hours or so, you don't feel as nowhere near as tired after doing a six-hour, seven-hour journey. It, it, it is it's true. I mean, I um, my first car was a twenty-four-hour, twenty-four-kilowatt Leaf, and uh, uh, before, twenty-four-hour Leaf. Yes, yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> what it felt like. Any time of day. Uh, I had a twenty-four <laughs> kilowatt Leaf, and I went up to Edinburgh, and I'd only had the car two weeks, but I'd just got this trip planned. It was my only car. And it took us something like 10 hours. It was crazy. Um, but we were relatively refreshed, and it felt like a fun adventure for us, you know. 
apart from that one time um, on the way back um, uh, when me and the wife were talking about um, basically I'd, I'd misjudged that map and I was quite new to charge I was winging everything that's I'm that kind of person sometimes <laughs> and uh, the wife was complaining about how cold she was she turned the heater on which in the old Japanese build leaves made no difference whatsoever <laughs> and I, I gave her an ultimatum I said you can have the heater on or you can make the charger <laughs> that's your choice <laughs> and Yes, I, we're a long way from those days, you know. Oh, certainly, you know, I think even with, I mean, with the ZSEV1, um, I guess, the one point is to be made that, yeah, it's got a standard resistive heater rather than some of the other models' heat pumps, especially with the Zoe and the new Leaf. But nowadays, with the battery capacity that we have, we really don't need to worry about whether or not to keep the cabin hot mm -hmm. yeah, or be able to make your destination. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, I mean, th th this is what I, I try and tell people at the moment, um, in that when people ask me, I'm, I'm no aficionado, on, <clears throat> pardon me, on electric cars, but, you know, I appreciate it, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm on the way there, obviously. But the point, the point that, um, that everyone says is, oh, those electric cars, oh, they're rubbish, you oh, recharge them every 50 miles, 60 miles. I said that might have been true about five, six years ago, but the trouble is, being a new technology, like any new technology, it sort of creeps up and then just rockets in, in progress. And that's the same with everything. I mean, and I say this pretty much at least once every episode. You know where I'm going with this, Darren. <laughs> but the Formula E racing cars, I, I, I'm, are, I'm, yes. a, I'm a big motor racing fan anyway. Yeah. I, I watch cars throw themselves around till, till, till I die. Um, but the, the electrics uh, have been amazing. They're on their sixth year. Um, and in six years, they've gone from having two cars where they have to jump out halfway into another car and carry <laughs> on with the rest of the race to doing the, the whole lot, of the, re the rest of it, all on one charge in more efficient batteries. And that's just six years. And if, if people can throw these cars around doing about 120 miles an hour, probably something like that, I, you, you get the drift. If they can do it for 45 minutes plus one lap at 100 miles an hour, then in an average consumer environment, well, like you or I are going to drive that's only going to help. And that's in six years. So imagine where it'll be in another six years. That is an amazing rate of change, and it's just going to accelerate, like you say. Kev, what's next on the channel? What can we expect coming up? Well, Just um, to put you on the spot. <laughs> well, the, I think that, I, I just like that last video, I mean, a lot of my videos are very unplanned. Uh, <laughs> um, I think, th so for example, this week, I'm actually heading down to Southampton to, first of all, um, look at the university there, but also um, slightly... More importantly, I'm also going there for a birthday pie. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the thing is, that video um, that I'm going to be recording is going to show you actually what we do as sort of electric vehicle drivers. So this is an actual planned route um, of 600, 650 odd miles. Um, in terms of in terms of other um, videos, sort of thinking more ahead, um, we're go. I'm going to be hopefully doing a European tour uh, in the nice. summer. So. Oh, wow. I would love to sort of do it more as a, to be fair, it's more like a travel vlog. It's not really to do fully about the ZS EV in particular, but I think it will showcase the capability of the car. Mm. And especially when we get more range in the um, in the summer. And it's it's, it's going to be like Top Gear was. It was absolutely nothing <laughs> yeah. to do, but by the end of it, it was absolutely nothing to do with the cars, was it? It was all about the journeys and the trips, but you get to use your car at the same time. So, exactly. yeah, no, nice one. Looking forward to it. Ah, okay, so that, that's all coming up on... KC Talk CV. Yep, certainly. Okay, so we just thought we'd uh, just change tack slightly and talk about a few things up and coming in, in the EV world. And recent uh, episodes of Fully Charged, which obviously is the show for EV fans to watch, they've been touring the Mini Electric Factory, I noticed. And, uh, and anyone that's listened to this podcast knows that I... Uh, kind of was a bit, little bit surly and disgruntled about the Mini E. Mm. Um, basically, you know, you know, I've got my opinions on it, but I'm interested in your opinions. First of all, you, John. It, it, it's a Mini, so to me it's, you know, I think we've, we've spoken about the Mini before, you either love them or, or, or not, but mm -hmm. it's just another car to me, which is fair enough. So the fact that it's a Mini, yeah, so what, you know, it could be a Peugeot 206, it could be anything, but the fact that it's another 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 brand if you want to call it that it's BMW but it's another brand another brand it's another choice I'm all for that um, but I, I think I share a similar gripe with you in the fact that yes it's a new car it's an electric it's, it's, it's progress in the whole mini front but it's not it's a, it's a in inverted commas a brand new car but what's inside it is just an old car with a different old shell on it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and that, that's the thing for me. I mean, I, I think 
I don't know whether that's planned by BMW, um, obviously the manufacturers of the Mini. I don't know if they've planned it or what. Have they got something else they're trying to put above the I Mini? Think, I think, yes, don't know. That there's the, um, is, uh, the, the X, the big SUV style thing. I think they're saving the batteries for that, right, uh, is, yes. what, is what I've roundly heard. But Kev, what's your thoughts on the range of the new Mini? Well, um, I think the, basically the thing with the thing with the um, the Mini E is at the price that it is based about twenty four thousand four hundred list. Uh, the range, I t- the the thing is, um, you know, for its target market, it's completely acceptable. It's a city car. It's for, Definitely. You know, hmm. I mean, yeah, okay, you do see, you know, on the motorway, you do see a lot of people travelling, um, you know, in the Minis. But the thing is. It is designed to be a very small, um, well, maybe not so small anymore. <laughs> not small city as it used car. to be. <laughs> um, you, you can see the streets of London, can't you? Littered with them absolutely <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Young professionals and, yeah, yeah. And I think, I mean, um, I, I mean I've got the stats here. It's about 145 miles um, WLTP. Uh, personally, for me, that is on the limit to what I would sort of expect nowadays. I think if you're going to release an EV in 2020, it needs to be at least on par of what the MG is doing, which is about 160. Because realistically, even though we've moved on from um, the WLTP to the NE, from the NEDC, you still need to minus off at least some range in for the winter or worst case scenario. Real, real world conditions, yeah. yeah. Well, be, you know, in, in a lab, you haven't got wind, you haven't got snow, you haven't got rain. So yeah, <laughs> if you just switch it on and push forward, that's how long it'll last for. So, but yeah, as, yeah um, I as, think you're right. As Darren said, you know, the battery is a little bit small. M- most other reasons why is probably because yep, it is on an older, probably battery chemistry, etc. But at the end of the day, it meets the target market. And frankly, because of all this um, malarkey, given the ban on ICE vehicles from 2035, they need to get a move on somehow. And I guess this is probably one of the first stepping stones of many. I yeah, think I, do I, well. I think that's it. Actually, a stepping stone. It, it, it is. It is an effort. An effort has been made to. I don't want to say to tick a box, but to, to move in the right direction, to mm. fill a gap so in, in their uh, in their output. So yeah, to, to give them credit as well, isn't it price parity on the petrol car as well? So yeah, I mean, the the most interesting thing was is that is actually price parity with the Cooper S. It's not even, you know, the base model Mini 1. I mean, <laughs> for that for that alone, you know, you are getting the kit as well, and you don't have to spend... And that, I think, shows especially, you know, a lot the one of the myths where, oh, yeah, it costs £10,000 more compared to the ICE car, but as with the Mini and the Peugeot E208, if you spec it up to the correct trim level, Hmm. You may be paying thousand five hundred thousand pound more, but that's the difference between a panoramic sunroof or you know. Well, an well exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're completely right. It's like when you buy the the Dacia Duster. You, yeah. you buy the cheapest one; it's got nothing in it, or you get the top end one with all the bells and whistles, and you, you can you can literally double the price in the car just with extras. But and, you know, which one's the one advertised on the billboards? You know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, but that's the best way to be. I'd say, to be fair, if you all, if you want a car just to jump into, drive to work, go home, and you spend what twenty minutes a day in it. Just go for the cheapy one. You're not going to spend all your life in it. No. Whereas if you are a taxi driver, you're going to spend all day in it. Then obviously go for the comfier seats and the, this, that, and the other. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think you're right. Actually, I, I was looking at it from as always from the technical perspective and getting things slightly overshot. I think, but yeah, it's for the target market. It's a small car for a small car parking space in a city. So yeah, yeah. And the same with the the idea of the old MGs as well. In, in as much as there are people who are brand loyal. Yes. Um, yes. And even though the brand obviously changed to yeah, own changed it over hands, the years, but people, you know, people will have had X amount of minis over the years. There might be some guys had the first minis in the sixties, and then he's, uh, you know, he, he goes and has the electric as, as his retirement car. But, and uh, you know, I like the idea of someone being brand loyal. I must admit that you know appeals to the the sentiment in me. Yeah, well, that's the whole very reason for the MG badge coming back, I guess. I mean, it's, it's SAIC that built build the cars, isn't it, Mini? Is that right? Yeah. Um, I can't I'm, remember, yeah, but it's, they've yeah. obviously bought the brand because they saw some value in it. And the fact that, I mean, from my untrained eyes on MGs, it kind of looks like an MG. You know what I mean? It's not just like they stuck a badge on another car. They've actually made a bit of effort to keep the, the look and feel going. So... Yeah, I mean the, I mean with them, I mean as yeah, as you both say about brand loyalty, I mean that's the reason why the vast majority of these badges originally came back into sort of fashion. I mean, mm. my, I mean, most interesting thing was when I explained to my dad I was buying a ZS. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, my dad's previous car was an MG ZS, um, oh, you know, right. two thousand six, one of the last one built at Longbridge, 
and I remember it being completely awful, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was... Best, I mean, I'll tell you this, to learn how to drive in it was awful because you needed to get things like clutch control right, and it was it, no feel in that. But handling-wise, that's why the MG badge was known. It was a great handling car. Yes. Right. And I think... And I think actually, to be honest, with the current MG range, even though it's under Chinese ownership, they still have that little bit of magic in them, I think, where they do handle. I mean, even their SUVs. <laughs> and I mean, if you've driven the MG3, it handles like a dream. And I think they still have that magic in them. And I think that's just incredible, really. Well, speaking of brands, uh, let's let's um, go to something, a very different animal. And uh, I, I don't know if you guys will have seen the new... Uh, the new Ford Mustang Marquina. What a beautiful beast that is. And speaking mm. of brands, it's interesting what Ford's done there, getting the Mustang name in. Yeah, it, it's, it's weird because, um, again, I know nothing about cars. I'm probably in the wrong podcast, to be honest with you. But the, um, the Mustang is, is it's the big American muscle car, mm-hmm. isn't it? It's, it's, you put your foot down when you're in neutral and the thing, you know, it growls. And, and, and the electric one obviously doesn't have the engine it doesn't have the growl but they've stuck the, the mustang badge on it and although it's it's weird i mean it looks like a mustang as far as i'm concerned but yeah i i don't know what the what the purists say on it or what it's um it's not a brand that i would have put on an electric car but it sounds like ford have kind of made it work i don't i, I don't know it what do kind you of think suggests they've invested in it in a way it's like we we are you know we're we're happy to put the mustang name on this i think that's a it's a bold move yeah, it's, 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 you know, when I first found out about it, I mean, I was sort of eyeing up the four-door sort of Grand Coupe Mustangs because, <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, I drive an electric vehicle, but, in you know, still in my heart somewhere, I do like an engine noise. And, well, yeah, yeah. yeah y- you do. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in, in the same way that an electric car will make you feel calm because exactly. there's less noise and racket, the excitement of the noise of the <laughs> of the car, it's, it's the opposite effect, but it depends why you own the car. Do you want a car to to feel like you're alive and you're on fire or do you want a car that's really practical and, and sensible and it's not going to cost you the earth it's a diff- different audience isn't it really yeah exactly and speaking of costing the earth what do you think of the price tag uh, oh yes that looks quite a lot doesn't it slightly out of my budget but then again I'm not the Mustang's uh, target audience that, yeah I think that's it isn't it I think it is a target audience and from 44 to 60 thousand dollars I think even yes. even once you've chopped that down into into pounds sterling yeah it's a bit more than I've got in my pocket at the moment <laughs> I think um I mean I've, I'm probably on the record somewhere on the channel saying that if it was around the 30 thousand pound list price mark I would have cancelled the order for the ZS <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah when I found out it was 40k I was a bit Luckily, all the sort of uh, weight came off my chest um, because that means I didn't have to call up the dealer. But I, mean, I think the thing is, when you, I mean, the base model at forty thousand pound. I know we've mentioned that, yeah, you wouldn't buy, you know, about the mini and the sort of price range. But forty thousand pound for the sort of the lower end battery model, it would still give you somewhere around two hundred and eighty WLTP, and so about two hundred real, two hundred real world miles. Hmm. And I think for that. And you look at all the other competitors, sort of like the iPace or the e-tron or the um, maybe even the Tesla Model X. I think actually, I wouldn't. It's none under no stretch of the imagination a bargain, but it is good value in comparison, especially when Ford isn't really a prestigious brand, I guess. So they don't have that. Yeah, well, I, mean, well, it's, well, I don't know. Ford in itself is not a prestigious brand, but the Mustang is yeah. is the top end of it, isn't yeah, it? Really, yeah, it's it's, certainly. Yeah. A recognised name, isn't it? Yeah, sure. I mean, you don't call it a Ford Mustang. You call it a Mustang yeah, you because you know Mustang, what it yeah. is straight away by by its redesign rather than so by its badge. W- what I was amused by when I was having a little look at sort of researching this, and I was amused by the names of the colours. So we've got Star White, mm. Absolute Black, <laughs> Space White, interestingly. What's the difference between Space White and Star White? No idea. Rapid Red, which is a nice bit of alliteration there. Mm. Infinite Blue, <laughs> Carbonized Grey. I think someone's a sci-fi fan there. Someone's yeah, been watching so the 2001: A Space Odyssey. Yeah, exactly. Before. Carbonized Grey reminds me of the the Skoda. I think they called it ca- Carbon Metal or Gun Gun Metal yeah. Carbon Grey or something like yeah. that. It was something to do with carbon, I'm sure. But that makes sense because that is the color of carbon. It's grey, but space, <laughs> star white. <laughs> yes. I, I know exactly where they've got this from. I think I reckon <sighs> they've got it from the Apple. You know, when you can buy an iPhone, it's space grey. Oh. Like, uh, 
rose gold when we clearly know it's pink. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing is, the thing is with colours. Um, yeah, I guess well, as long the one thing I've noticed is with the when I was buying the MG colours, um, that was very interesting. You know, when you have tri, sorry, Pimlico blue, which is sort of like a baby blue, and then you've got the tricolour red, dynamic red, I, dynamic I, red. I've got to admit, I'm quite shallow. It's it's blue. It's dark blue. It's light blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's red. It's bright red. It's pink. I, I am not. I'm not one of these. I mean, it's like buying paint, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I work. You've got in six thousands th- of colours, and they're all yeah. the difference between I don't know, um, baby vomit green and, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and mould in the back of the fridge green is is nothing. But this is a completely different name. I'm sure I've seen a, <laughs> a souped up Ford Fiesta with a, with a plastic spoiler driving around hall that's baby vomit green. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and when you know, I mean, I to be perfectly honest with you, as as proven, you know, I remember. I, I probably work in about sixteen colours really. I don't really, I don't have the full <laughs> colour palette. So telling me, oh yeah, it's burgundy. <laughs> it's no. red to me, isn't it? <laughs> but I, I thought that was brown. Well ooh, it's or touchy subjects. <laughs> ready brown, we'll meet you halfway. <laughs> yeah, I think um the mar- I think the marquee is gonna be interesting and I think the other thing about especially when buying electric vehicles in Britain, uh with all the politics that's going around there, I think I don't. I, I'm not quite sure whether we are going to have no um, as much of the choice in comparison to other sort of countries. So we do kind of have to. Hmm. Um, and I think the fact that the marquee is definitely coming to the UK is just another good selling point. I guess. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's another. It's another one on the choice list, isn't hmm. it? What, uh, what do you want to buy? The list is getting bigger every day. I mean, that? for me, we go to events like um, EVs in the park every year, and you know what. Every year you go, there's another model that you've not seen before. And, and this year, they've all ramped it up because of the new legislation, having yes. all the manufacturers and their, their carbon targets and what have you. Yeah, do you know, do you know what? That's not occurred to me before. You're, you're bang on. Because when I went to EVs in the park, the car I'd never seen before at the time was the Hyundai Ioniq. Yeah. And I absolutely still love the look of the car. But yeah. you're completely right. I mean, that car must be, it must be nearly three years since I saw that car. And that's, uh, that's got me thinking that. Am, yeah. am I? Am I? Have I got my heart eventually set on buying an old car, which is going to be massively trumped out by what's coming out this year? I don't know, but uh, you like what you like, just go for mm. it. Well, if you're still with us, thank you very much. This has been episode four of the Yorkshire EV Club Electric Dreams podcast. Uh, thanks very much, Kevin, for joining us this week. Well, thank you for letting me be here. It's been a pleasure. No, it's, it's been good as well, and thanks for the lift as well. Thanks for lifting oh, the yeah, studios. That, that yes. as well. Yeah, we enjoyed being chauffeured, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're currently sat in uh, Hulk Kingston Radio's uh, studio two at the moment, doing some recording. So, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully we got the sound right. It's um, it's a bit of a, a bit of a squash in this studio, but hopefully we're all right. And I can confirm that through that lovely panoramic roof in that MG, I could see. Bugger all, because <laughs> it's so dark out there. It's pitch black, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, at the time of recording, the weather outside is absolutely grim. We've had a lovely day today, loads of sunshine, and this massive wave of rain has just gone boom and just dumped itself so all over Yorkshire. So, thanks, yeah, thanks, thanks for coming out and uh, and picking us up, Kev. And uh, like I say, we're in a radio studio now. It's uh, about half eight, but uh, thanks so much. So, just a reminder, folks, Kevin runs a channel called KC Talks EV. Yep, that's um, yep. Casey Talk CV. If you type that in in YouTube, um, it normally comes up with or without spaces. Um, I reached 100 subscribers, so I was able to actually get hey. that channel <laughs> channel address. <laughs> You know, without needing to give you a really long string of random letters and numbers. So, yeah, Brilliant. that's KC Talk TV. Superb. 100, 100. Yeah. That's probably more listeners than we have, so that's brilliant. Well, you even allowed channel <laughs> art at 100 as well, so I had to, like, make whip something up quickly. So I ended up just getting an octagon and just putting it on. Oh, <laughs> well, obviously, oh, being on obviously, being on this podcast is going to do wonders for his reputation. Uh, uh, other way around, surely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But no, honestly, thanks for coming down yeah, and joining thanks us. And, and thank, thanks very much for everything this evening. It's, uh, it's nice to have, it's good to have a guest. Mixes up the conversation a little bit, doesn't it? So we'll, we'll be back very soon, folks. Look out for Yorkshire Review Club events. You'll find us on um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, just connect with us. We talk, we're friendly, we don't fight much. Don't forget, you can also check out the website as and well if you can't a, find us. Our fantastic website. Mm. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. YorkshireEVClub.co.uk. Thank you very much. See you next time. See you now. Cheers all. Bye. Bye.